In this video, we'll be taking a look at the EBGA XR1 Lite capture card. With the ability to capture 1080p 60fps and pass through 4K 60fps, it should be a decent budget solution to capture your Mr. FPGA gameplay or other consoles. Certified for OBS, this should be a simple plug and play solution. Let's put it to the test. Let's get this gumball out of the wrapper. Here's the included USB-C cable and HDMI cable. Got an instruction booklet. Got a nice little Klondike bar in the wrapper here. Hard as hell to get out. Still hard as hell to get out. There we go. Peel that back. The unit itself, it feels kind of light kind of rattly mine feels a little bit loose but it's got a fair bit of heft to it it don't feel super cheap got rubber feet on the bottom my HDMI cables are so stiff this thing's just hovering in the air it's so light anyway so feet ain't even really needed here's a look at the instruction manual really just a quick start guide pretty basic Here's a better look-see at it with its dimpled texture and the XR1 light branding and a good-looking mister. Oh yeah, but it looks okay. How does this perform? Let's get this hooked up. All you need to do is unplug your current HDMI cable coming out of your mister. Plug in the included HDMI cable to the input of the XR1 light. The existing HDMI connected to your display gets plugged into the pass-through output port. Connect the included USB-C cable into the capture device. This port right here on the XR1 Lite had some quality control issues. I thought it was inserted all the way. I went ahead and plugged the other end into an available USB 3.0 port. And this device was dead. No light. I about sent it back until I finally forced that USB-C cable into that port and it made a large popping sound and I thought I broke it but it, it started working after that so keep that in mind if you have an issue like I did and you think you got a dead unit. Okay time to hop in OBS and see if this device is plug and play. Off the bat let me get rid of this psychedelic preview here. Okay if this is your first time running OBS you won't have this display capture down here as a source. It's just there for me to record this video. You'll want to click the add and select video capture device. Here you can leave it named as video capture device or we can rename it to whatever you want. I'll uh, rename it XR1 Lite. Hit OK and you will see, let me hide this, you will see that the device is recognized, EVGA XR1 Lite capture box video. So it looks like it's recognized and we can just take a look at some of these other settings. You can go to configure and you can mess with your brightness, contrast, hue, saturation. Um, let's see what else we got. I just leave everything at default. This is supposed to be certified for OBS and plug and play. So we'll just test everything on the default settings. Head down here to the settings tab if this is your first time setting up OBS. There's a couple things you'll want to make sure you set here. Go to output. If you have a really good CPU, you'll probably want to encode with X264. If you have a modern NVIDIA card, set it to NVENC. Uh, set your record path, your quality, your recording format and all that. You can leave that default. Your base canvas. I record in 4K right now because that's my monitor's native resolution. For capturing Mr., we're going to be capturing in 1080p 60. So we would set base canvas resolution to 1920 by 1080 and our output would be 1920 by 1080. And in that case, our downscale filter wouldn't apply. So if we wanted to capture with Mr. right now, we would make sure that under sources, our XR1 light is not crossed out, that it's visible. And we would see our Mr. screen here in the preview window. If it's too small, you wanna grab this preview window and stretch it till it's full screen. And down here at the bottom right, you have 
start recording, stop recording, and there's a pause button. So here we got the mister powered on. I have it visible under the sources and I've clicked record and we can see the screen here. I have went ahead and stretched it out to full screen. Go ahead and load up an NES core here. Load up ROM and let's do some uh, Spider-Man. Screw it. And here we go. Very happy with the video quality. Bright, vivid, crisp quality looks great. Um, audio, no problems as long as I load a core and record only that core. But I have ran into audio desyncing when I start loading into different cores. I'm gonna show you an example of that. Hopefully some of you guys could uh, shed some of your expertise. I've been using OBS and DaVinci Resolve Studio for a year or two to do uh, display capture and video editing, but this is my first capture card. So I don't know if it's the audio bit rates not syncing, you know, when I change cores or just something in OBS or if it's the capture card itself. So here's an example of one of my problematic captures. I start off with Contra on NES and audio is perfectly synced. But as I continue recording, I switch cores and it seems like the more times I switch cores, the more and more the audio gets out of sync and starts lagging behind. If I switch cores three, four, five, six times, by the end of the video, the audio's two, three seconds behind. So these next five game clips were all part of one capture where I switched cores in between. And you can see after each core switch, the audio sync gets progressively worse. So if anybody has a clue about this issue, let me know. Other than that, the video capture on this thing is, is pretty damn amazing for 60 bucks. But I just need to iron out these audio issues and We'll see about the longevity of this device. So I'm going to shut up so you can hear these audio issues. And don't forget to like and subscribe. By the way, these were all just basic suggestions on settings. You can set things a million different ways. This is just a, a basic setup guide. Oh, yeah. Thank you. 